We'll call it the J, what is it, JCPOA, is because we know how you are about treatments, you guys So we know that's right, Mr. Jim. We're saying, got to understand, we're saying to the United States government, you might say, you might have Musa, tell me, you might have Musa has been sending messages to the United States government for decades. This utopian view that I have of the world, that's been with me since 1970. Because by 1970, I was super rich, had everything that Negroes was just dreaming about, falling out of the bed about, drooling at the mouth. And I had more than, well, you could have, sometimes you could have some, so much money you don't even know what to do with it. But you still spread it around and it helps the community. So I said, I got everything that they said was that niggas should, should have. And uh, the police is doing this, the police is doing that. I said, this ain't no fun. I said, we got to have a better world than this. So believe it or not, <laughs> this is when I came up in my mind with this better worldism, 1970, 50 years ago. But now all the other stuff that we went through since then was preparing us for this day right now. Why? Uh, let me outline a few things. Why is it all right or it's great to sign a treaty with me? I'm talking about me right now. Number one, I didn't pass all the tests that they have. I already know that I'm the number one man on their list. I happened to go over to, uh, when they held me up from going to South Africa uh, one time, uh, I said, okay. I was gonna go to Iran in a couple of weeks after that, when I came back. So I went over to the customs and I talked to the supervisor, the black supervisor, and he had two uh, white witnesses, a man and a woman. And uh, I said, look, last time I was ready to go to South Africa from Atlanta. I flew from here to Atlanta, and then I was supposed to get on the plane. The uh, customs took me off the plane and uh, just said, you can't fly, and held me up. And I had to, I stayed at the airport all of that day and then got the next plane, because there was one plane a day going. So when I was going to Iran the next time, I went over to Dallas Airport. And I said, I want to talk to the supervisor that's going to be on tomorrow. That was when I'm going to be. I said, um, I told him, I'm going to Iran, and I want to know so we can resolve whatever we got to resolve now so I don't get held up going. Plus, they don't hold people up going out. They hold them up coming in. So it's up. The customs, the head of customs over there told me, he said, look, you don't have to worry. He gave me his name and everything. And something come up, just give me a call. He said, you, everything on you comes from the top. There's nothing. Everything, I said, you mean the very top? He said, the very top. Everything dealing with you comes from the top. Everything that comes, the, you know what I mean? When I get off the plane, they may not do it now. When I get off the plane and I'm walking, they got passport control, and you didn't get your luggage, and then they had, I don't know how to do it. I, there's a guy waiting for me. I wave at him, hey, how you doing? They waiting for me. As soon as I come in, and the pass, sometime they get me before passport, before you even, and sometime when they got me a passport control, the guy's looking at it, he said, no, the 
other customers they tell them, hey, how you doing? How was your trip? And we go in. And I do, I've been, I did this every time for the last 10 times I came back in the U.S., you know. So the FBI come here and they call you they, to get my number, right? right yeah. You think the FBI needs my phone number? Right. This is bull. This is ridiculous. But they came by so you would be a witness that they came by to talk to me. That's what they're doing. That's what they're reasoning. And then they told me, uh, oh, by the way, uh, you know, uh, maybe you shouldn't go back to California. Said, What's happening with that? Well, uh, you know what happened. See, I know what happened. You said, did they do anything about it? Did you call the police? Did you? I said, of course I did. He said, did they do anything about it? I said, of course not. He said, that's what we're saying. It's dangerous for you to go back to Oakland. Guess what he says? You should stay here and do good deeds. Like he ain't listen to nothing I'm saying. The man know everything. So look, so like right now we're in another arena. We're in another historical period. I'm saying to them, you guys know me. You watch everything I do. If I write, when I write this stuff, sometimes I'm sitting there writing, and I write stuff to see what happened. I just, I do it all the time. Guess what? I'm sitting right there at my desk writing. That means the thing is right over the top. It has to be because they're reading what I'm writing, because I'm writing it to see if they read it. At every test, either the phone ring or when I get down here, something happened to let me know that they read exactly what I done wrote. Or they try to counter, have somebody call me to counter what I just wrote, all that dumb stuff. So enough is enough. We already know. Now, for me, I passed every test, the sex, sex test, ethics. I haven't bite, bit no hook that the white man throw out there, none. And that runs crazy. They don't, first of all, they don't believe it. They don't believe that you can have those kind of ethics. So my grandson, my son was telling me that when we were out in the masjid, uh, he said, Dad, you got to be careful because they can see everything you do. I said, I know that. I said, they can't watch a nigga do nothing but uh, masturbate or something. So they can, uh, what? They can be peeping down. That's what they're going to do. They can't do nothing. Right? I said, they watch. I said, do you know when you was a little boy? Yeah, and he's 50 years old. I said, yeah. I said, what did I tell you about here? He said, oh. I said, who was Mansoor? Who was this? Who? He said, we all knew he was all the police. I said, yeah, that's when he was a kid. He said, I said, now you're 50 years old. What the heck do you think has been going on? This has been going on since then. So we have to realize that there's a, a minimum of a 50-year period. I believe it's 55. It might even be more. Because when I was 19 and I just became a so-called black Muslim, uh, black Muslims have strict, uh, you know, habits, you know, stuff like that. S certain things you don't supposed to do. So, uh, I was on the second tier, I think, and this is in the penitentiary in Tracy. And I was way down at the end, maybe room 25, 225. And next door to me, room 226, was a prettiest little sissy, little Mexican sissy. And he used to have a red light on the thing, you know what I mean, to let you know, you know. And he was my next door neighbor. I used to talk to him. I liked the little guy. But I wasn't going to do nothing to him because it's against the rules. And plus, 
It ain't against the penitentiary rules to knock no cutie pie sissy over there. That ain't no against the rules. In fact, people be buying that like they prostitute. They in the penitentiary. People be buying and selling each other for cartons of cigarettes. How much it gonna charge me for? The, you know, stuff like that. So when I thought about it, I said the police back in '64 was trying to test me because I had joined the Nation of Islam. So they want you to do something wrong, and then they publicize it. Tell you, you ain't do this, or they know where you're coming from. Well, just imagine. Now, just imagine, you know, you're in the penitentiary, you got his little sister got the nice little red light, and then the, the, the room got a nice smell, you spray something in there. You know, it smells like a little whorehouse, like, you know. And he don't mess with nobody else. Because he's my neighbor, I could tell if there's something's going on. He there for me only. That was it. But in modern times, all of these contrived events, that's why I was talking about the Holly Berry, well, she may not look like Holly Berry now, because Sister Bahia says she didn't gain a lot of weight. And I, be, I don't say, how the hell you know that she didn't gain a lot of weight? And you supposed to hate her. She was the one that was married, married Abdul Malik. You was married to Abdul Malik. I don't run all that down. I just said, oh. so she's fat now. That's what, or gained weight. Well, if they're going to try to put her back on me, they'll run around the thing for six months till she trimmed down a little. You know what I mean? But I just write her name and then I make a statement for a few days. And then I get a call. Why I want to call? I want to call to measure. Have you been a part of this scheme? Was your part in this such and such and such? Or was it something else? How much did you know? And like they say, and when did you know it? Right? So remember, they play games with me all the time. I just play games right back. That's why you don't see nobody. I ain't worried about it. I don't care what you do. I'm already, I'm gonna know what I need to know for my own, uh, let's call it uh, peace of mind security, but I'm not going to fall for none of that stuff. I don't care, and they know most niggas like white girls, so they're going to have white girls, they're going to have yellow girls, they're going to have even a few black ones, you know what I mean? All They're going to go the whole gamut. So I've already passed all those tests, and nobody else has. I don't believe... Uh, I don't believe they have. I just technically don't believe that the Negro would pass those tests. To me, they're simple tests. I don't know. I ain't doing that. I'm just not doing it because it's not right according to what I'm doing. Now, if you want to get married, I'll marry anybody else if you want to get married. Everybody else around here marry each other. The people marry each other and then they go and Run off like right next door. The guy that uh, left all that junk on there. But he had two nice daughters. They was going to the same school over there at Thurgood Marshall that Sakina and them went to. Top of the line students. Top of the line. They ready to, uh, they're on all the clubs that uh, Sakina had already went to college up there. But Fatima was still over there. They own a little, this team, that team. They were perfect students. Just like Sakina was, top of the line. And Fatima too. So he sent his, his daughters that was at that age up to Philadelphia. Now Philadelphia, I'm not against Philadelphia. 
But if one in eight people in Philadelphia is Muslims and they don't have no moral effect on the thing, something's wrong with Philadelphia and the Negroes as Muslims up there. If you're one in eight people and you don't have no effect on the society and the people don't say, no, the Muslims do this, the Muslims don't do that, they don't say that in Philadelphia. And plus the background. So I told him, I said, hey, you know, at my house, I stay downstairs, but I'll, I'll move into the masjid. If you got a, if it's something with your daughters, they can come down and stay in my house with my daughters. Free of charge, don't worry about a thing. And they can keep going to that school over there, I said, because they're doing good over there. You know, every, all the kids talking, they know who's this at. He sent them up there anyway, and the oldest one is pregnant and had a baby. I mean, in like two years, that's, until, that's just, it happens, it happens. People marry each other around here, they divorce, they move. So those things are so-called sacred, like marriage and divorce, the people do it, just like in the movie. You want to trap somebody, you trap them with a girl. You want to trap a woman, you trap them with a handsome man. Same old dumb stuff. They do that. And they get married. They do it so often, they would be playing with me, you know. Would you marry us? Sure. So that I get enough skill in marriage. You know. Yeah, they, they say you need skill in it. Even they'll hold up a body and they'll say they want to test the seat. Do I know how to wash bodies? So, yeah, of course they do every time. So that if somebody called and said, the brother's over there, he's already in the funeral, but they want him. So I'll take the brothers with me over and wash them, wash the body, right according to the sunnah. Yeah. And if they want to have somebody perform a big funeral here and don't want me to do it, They'll ask somebody else, can they do it? And then they'll have cars parked all over the street and all that. Gigantic funerals, right here. But I won't have nothing to do with it, you see? They so this stuff, so basically I'm saying, finish with all that stuff. It's too, we're too far along with all that. So we want to sign a treaty, but here's the way. Sex test, ethics, we have invited nothing. The power test, if you have power and wealth and money. I got lucky with that test over 50 years ago. You know, I got lucky with that test. I just, uh, because uh, you are who you are, I mean, from Jump Street, but if you got certain Propensities, all the human beings got certain propensities that be best stuff. You got to tighten up certain things. You got to increase others. In other words, you come with who you are. Uh, my uh, nephew, my real nephew, not my grandnephew, that was doing these things, but my nephew. So he we was talking about our family, and I said, no, I came like that. Who's was talking about money. I said, uh, I used to save silver dollars and put them in, uh, in the drawer and uh, other brothers, two older brothers, actually three, I said, but I know one that did, he didn't steal and uh, the other two would, but one, I know he was, he would take my little money with, and he had money, but I would have to, just five dollars in the drawer, you know, so I was telling them, no, I came with that habit of managing money and all that. I came with that. That's all I had to do was improve it. It, it wasn't never like, I got to really work on this. And it was such a good habit that when other Negroes, we got at a place, we was getting so much money that you start partying a little bit, and then you get loose a little bit, one of my friends, Willie Ward, went down 
And he was a big hustler, Willie Ward. You know, the Ward brothers. The guys, you know, some of them was on the movies. What was that movie? Mac. It was in the Mac. The one that won the Mac, Mac of the Year Award. There was two of them, Ted Ward and Willie Ward. Yeah, well, Willie Ward was a young man. So anyway, we down at the California Hotel, at the stroll and all the spots. And so, him and his friend was in the car, or my car, and then another, and then me and my friend was in the car. So, uh, we were starting to blow. So, we got kind of loose. So, uh, I leaned back and said, you got another one of them things? You know, another package of cocaine. So we just don't slide. So Willie Ward said to me, he done, I told him this years ago, years later, he didn't remember nothing. He said, you keep that up, you won't be captain of the ship. I didn't say nothing, but I heard it. It was just the thing I needed to know. The next morning, I was headed to the hills, back lifting weights. When I'd come to the nightclub, I'd have a tight t-shirt on, you know what I mean, instead of big, Soup and all of that, and uh, hey, uh, right away, one little message is all I needed to know. Not only did I get back phys physically fit, which I always was, but also the management of money. I took all the cocaine and locked it up. No more party. That's it. One little message. Why? Because I was already like that, and we was getting a little loose. If we would have kept that up for another month or three months, we'd have been broke. All our stuff would have been. We would have been like other Negroes. You know, just laying out, chasing women. You know what I mean? Having big money, having all up around, and all that dumb stuff. Hey man, one little man, you keep that up, you won't be captain of the ship. I didn't say nothing. That the next morning, hey, I could have went home right then and said good night, goodbye, see you all I'm going on. And I'm telling you, the next day I was up in the hills walking at first and then running and lifting iron, back in discipline. Everybody have to meet at my shop at eight o'clock. You know, when we start doing our business, record to, to, to standardized procedure, they white folks call it. Yeah. We're back in.